We've just gotten back from the range today. Now, today we're going to talk about an interesting project that I've undertaken uh, out of necessity during these current times. Primers. Primers are difficult to find for everybody. So, this was my last box of large. No, sorry. Wrong box. It's around here somewhere. There it was. This was my last box of large rifle primers, number 200. I usually use this from everything from my Alt 6, my 45, 70, my 30, 30. Um, so I'm going to start with a quote. Frodo says to Gandalf, I wish it need not have happened in my time. Gandalf replies, so do I, and so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. Now, I'm not saying that we're about to go take a ring to Mordor or trek, you know, however many hundred miles, or even if the situation is that dire. Some people may believe it is. Some people may believe it's going to just pass. That's the, yeah, you know, that's yet to be seen, but uh, I'm not going to comment one way or the other. But it definitely, it definitely, you know, it shows that we have to sort of start improvising to get, you know, to keep doing what we love. So I seem to have the opposite problem. Nobody can find primers. That's nothing new. That's, not, that's been going on for, what, a year, two years now? But when you do find primers, you can typically find large rifle, but your pistol calibers you usually SOL on. Well, I seem to have the opposite problem of everybody else. I was able to pick up a brick, a thousand, of Magnum pistol primers number 350 for loading in my 44 Magnum. I started running low on, on large rifle primers, and I started to wonder, could I shove Magnum pistol primers in my 4570 and my 3030? And would this... Well, let's stop for a second. Let's hold it up. And would this... Uh, seeing as they seat deeper, they're not sh they're not as long. Would this provide any? They seat would they seat deeper in the pocket? Would it even work? I tested it. Yeah, they would work. I've tested them right here on the bench. Uh, they would go off. <clears throat> they burn a little hotter. So does this provide any benefit as far as velocity? As far as you know, uh, oh man, what's the word? Deviation between shots. Would this provide any benefit, or is this going to hinder? So I set out. Uh, and I looked on the forums I, and I consulted a forum from 2013 and I found a man that was talking about loading him, shoving Magnum pr pistol primers into his 444 Marlin and he was talking about fantastic results but didn't post any numbers. And the man, the reason it was brought up because a man was asking the exact same question I was asking. Could he load them into his 3030 Marlin? And the man said, well, 40, 444 and 3030 both being tube fed, you don't have the problem seeing as they recess deeper in the primer pocket, you don't have the problem of it detonating, you know, chain fire event. So, and they seem to, you know, they have a softer compound, so the hammer definitely hits it. It doesn't seem to flatten out or anything like that, but nobody posted numbers. Nobody posted videos. This is back in another ammo shortage, you know, almost a decade ago. So people were having to improvise then. We're having to improvise now. So I started to wonder, like, okay, what can we do with Magnum primers in a rifle? Especially in a lever gun. I'm not sure I need to test it in my Alt-6. I've loaded up plenty of rounds for my Alt-6, but I just might. So... I set out today and I loaded up my the bear load for a 3030. Yes, a 3030 bear load. We'll go into that. Um, what will it take to make a 3030 a bear gun? We can def we'll make a video on that because I I sussed it out and worked it up and I think I've got it narrowed down. And obviously my 4570 bear load that we've seen here before. I've loaded them both up with Magnum pistol and I loaded up a bunch with large rifle primers and I sat set out with the chronograph today, which you guys are about to see and. Um, Shot them over the chronograph to see what my standard deviation was, if there was a velocity gain, or if there was a velocity hindrance. We're going to go into all of it, if it even functioned at all. So, if you got some Magnum pistol primers laying around, this might be the solution for you. It might not be. I might be an idiot for trying it at all. Philosophy is not what we're going to go into today. We're going to go into shooting. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and cut to the range. <clears throat> All right, it's a little busier today than I expected it to be, so we'll make this quick. All right, today we're going to be researching about if there's any benefit to using Magnum pistol primers in a 3030 and a 4570 as versus large rifle primers. They burn a little hotter, seat a little deeper. Got the chronograph set up on a tripod. We're going to see what the numbers are. No target today. We're just going strictly velocities. So, all right, first shot. Large pistol primers, identical charges. Three shots. Twenty-eight. 
2204. 265 2259 All right So there appears to be a 30 foot per second split it looking like maybe 20 uh, I'm going to have to go back and watch the footage didn't write it down this time <laughs> got errands to run in town so all right, now we're going to try. So, that's a, that's a Magnum pistol primer, large <laughs> primer. Let's see if there's a difference there. I'm thinking there will be. All right, old score is up there. I didn't want to go down and redo it. So, three shots, large rifle primers, 4570, 44 grains, RL7. 405 grain hard cast gas checked. Again, these are large rifle primers. Seventeen thirty-seven. It's about in the neighborhood where we were before. That brace on this one, I forgot. Seventeen seventy-three. Looking good so far. So 1755. All right, Magnum pistol primer and a 4570, exact same load. split after actions in the truck because I've got a honeydew list longer than a CVS receipt when I get home so I'm a marine I don't do math but I know the word standard deviation and I generalize what it means so what we're looking at my after actions what I wrote down I just on my little envelope here in my truck very scientific is with the large rifle primers I didn't put that in the video I'm gonna Put a little letterhead on it. Uh, first shot, 22.44. Second shot, 21.94. Sec third shot, 22.37. Magnum pistol primers, 33rd. Exact same uh, charge in the 3030. 22.66, 22.65, 22.59. Like, that's a up and down. Looks like a foot per second difference up and like six feet per second di difference down. So... That's a whole lot more consistent than the large rifle primer was. From what, you know, you can make your own assumptions on that. 4570, 1737, first shot with the large rifle primers. 1737, first shot. 1773, second shot. That's like a damn near 40 feet per second difference. 1755, right down the middle of those two. Uh, that's large rifle primers. Small Magnum pistol primers, 1772, first shot, 1774, second shot, 1778, uh, third shot. So that's four feet per second up and two feet per second down. 
much more consistent. So, my assumption, and people in the comments can tell me if I'm wrong, is that these hotter burning number 350 Magnum pistol primers are doing better with that RL7. Now, I will be down to experiment with 30 out 6 with my H4350. That's a bit of a more of a pellet like and powder versus the RL7, which is closer to a ball. I wouldn't necessarily call it a ball powder. It's just definitely much smaller pellets. Much so I'm, it's looking like those Magnum pistol primers are just burning that burning that charge more efficiently. So uh, I guess an argument could be made. I'm gonna go and do some research into loading Magnum pistol Magnum rifle primers in your 45, 70, and 30, 30 loads if you're running a fine powder like RL7, Reloader 7. Um, but for now, Magnum Pistol Primers is what I got, and they're working. So if you have that question, is if Magnum Pistol Primers are going to work for you in your application with your powder, let's say they will. So this has been very scientific. So I hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I'll say it again. I hope y'all enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it because I sure enjoyed making it. I'm going to try and keep content coming to y'all. Um, I'm going to be gone for four weeks here in the next couple weeks. I'm going to keep I got three weeks of downtime between now and getting back up to base camp and uh, up in Swan Mountain. Uh, so I'll be uh, I'll be down here. I'll make some videos for you. I'll do a, you know, a review video on my 629 and my holster that I got with it. And... Um, I'll do some more. I'll do some more alt six loading. Some some reviews on that, and uh, we got a we got a special project in the works uh, that I'm really excited to share with y'all. But there'll be more on that later. Uh, we're waiting on a rebarrel from McGowan up in Kalispell. That's a few months out. I think we'll talk about that a little bit more as it gets closer. So anyway, y'all get out there and do all those good things that you're capable of. Go hug your mamas if she's still around, and watch for bears. Take care.